Hello, I'm Donna Barnes from 91, and I'm joined today once again with Jakob van Tonda, who is our Director of Advisor Services. This time, though, we're talking about the experience people have in retirement and actually what we need to do about it. Yaku has over 25 years of experience and spearheaded loads of research in this space, working together with the regulators, clients, advisors, and other industry experts. Yaku, thanks again for joining us. I appreciate you carving out the time. Hi, Donna. It's good to be here. Having spent so much time with pensioners, Yaku, maybe kick us off as a good place to start is why the experience in retirement can be so daunting. So, so most people, when they think about retirement, um, and I think this is, rings true for retirement as practiced still today, so I'm not going to get into the question that people think that retirement's going to change and the fact that you stop working at 65 and you do nothing for 30 years. I mean, there are big question marks about whether that is going to continue in the modern day of work. But suffice to say, for a lot of people who retire today, that still is the way that they retire. So at age 65, they step out of a job and they go and completely change their lives. And, and most people, when they do that, they think it's mostly a financial decision. And, and they're true, they're, it's true. There are some pretty important financial considerations because obviously you are um, shifting from saving for your entire life and being dependent on some type of income for, from a job. And you're, work, you're moving into consumption mode now where you are withdrawing an income from the money that you've saved and you're having to deal with the fears of, um, you know, will I have enough and, and the market stresses that come along with that whenever the market spikes or the market drops. So, so there are obviously some interesting financial challenges that need management uh, and people are generally aware of that when they reach retirement. The piece that, however, surprises a lot of pensioners, and I get this from conversations with many advisors and even within pensioners themselves, is people underestimate the psychological impact of stepping out of a workplace. They, they underestimate the fact that so much about their sense of purpose and identity is tied up in the place that they've worked, the job that they've performed, and the bigger social circle that they were involved in that, that consisted of their career and the kind of the, the wider impact of their career. And so when you retire, you also step away to a large extent from all of that. And, and that can be quite an interesting kind of psychological experience, which for some people ends up being really difficult to do. Um, and, and it can, in the first years of retirement, uh, often lead to some interesting challenges as, as people try and adapt and, and adjust to that, on top of, of course, having to deal with the financial implications of being in, in retirement and everything else that, that comes along with that. Just listening to you talk about the psychological challenges made me think of my dad, who retired almost 10 years ago, but really struggled to come to terms with the transition. Yeah. You know, I think looking back on it, he felt like it was a bit of an injustice to retire at 60, even though he'd worked his entire life. Are those experiences different for men uh, versus women? Well, I mean, coming back to your dad, I think there's, um, and, and, and your dad is probably an example of the movement where people are saying, maybe we shouldn't retire completely, but kind of work half day still for the first 10 years or 20 years to deal with that exact same issue. But I mean, that's a discussion for another day. Um, in terms of the, how women and men experience it differently, I think it very much depends on, uh, I mean, obviously the, the math tells you that women will live five years longer than men. Uh, and in cases of married couples, the differential is even larger. So, so for married couples uh, where the male would pass away first, you can see on the stats that women often live for another 10 to 15 years beyond the death of their spouse. So, so the, it's, it's quite a little bit different than just the averages. Um, and, and so I, I would say that uh, for women who have been very much career focused and had always taken care of their own financial affairs, the transition into retirement is very much the same as for a man, except for the fact that you maybe need a little bit more money because you're going to live a bit longer. However, the reality today is that, that, that a lot of women retiring today um, had gone through the system of work that where, where, where women were often disenfranchised from their financial affairs, number one, um, and the financial affairs were often managed by the, the husband in the, in the household. Secondly, many of those women um, didn't work for a full 40 years. Many of them would sacrifice large parts of their career to be uh, to, to be primary caregivers and raise children, which has a devastating impact on your retirement savings. And, and many of them have not been incorporated or involved in, in the retirement planning and saving and investment discussion of the household up to that point. Now, for that particular group of women, I think there is quite a, 
quite a it's quite a big change when when they actually shift um, into retirement and and they're having to deal with a whole number of additional challenges relating to the fact that they um, you know that they have to learn how finances work now um, and because they live longer than men and because they've got this I don't know, 8, 9, 10, 12 years that they've got to manage their finances on their own, they've got to get to grips with quite a lot of financial complexity at an advanced stage in their lives and often for the first time only when their spouse passes away. And that can be quite challenging. So planning a retirement really does involve quite a bit of decision making. Tell us, Yaku, what are the important factors to consider when you're looking at taking an income in retirement? So, so, so the concept of how you fund your retirement has changed a lot in the last 20, 30 years. I mean, my parents' generation <clears throat> and your parents' generation, you know, worked at large corporates and parastatals and had a guaranteed pension until the day that they passed away. And there was a spouse's pension for the spouse if the, if the primary uh, uh, employed, um, which was normally the husband in those days, passed away. We are long past those days. Today, when people retire, they get an amount of money that is paid, payable to them. And that money is more often than not invested in a portfolio of investment assets that we call a living annuity. And inside of that living annuity are all sorts of you know, investment funds and they go up and down when the market goes up and down and they go up and down when the rand weakens versus the dollar and the currency goes all over the place. So, so these are all th like new things which the previous generation pension has never really had to deal with. So, so when you're looking at people retiring today, the challenges they face is, is making sure that you don't draw too much from your annuity, in which case you empty the annuity while you're still alive and there's not enough money left. Secondly, making sure that that annuity is invested in what we call growth assets. So you can't just invest your retirement nest egg in a bank account or in a money market fund and think that that is going to last you for 30 years. So how do you balance the, uh, the, the correct amount of risk that you need to take so that you expose to the equity markets and you expose to the currency markets both globally and in South Africa? And, and those can be quite challenging and uncomfortable decisions. And then of course, there's the psychological effect now with managing your own emotions. So the classic trap of greed and fear. So being worried when the markets crash and wanting to switch all your money into cash or being becoming greedy when the markets have run really hard and all of a sudden you want to switch everything into equities or shares so that you can get the biggest growth possible. So, so all of those challenges need to be balanced and managed quite carefully. And in a living annuity, that is a, a job that needs to be done on basically an annual basis for the rest of the lifetime of the pensioner. I've read in some of your previous work, uh, Yaku, just around this longevity risk for women and that we outlive men generally. Um, what difference does that make to, to looking at your income in retirement? So, so there's two things. So, so on average, women live um, in Western societies about five years longer than men. So obviously you need a little bit more money to cater for, for women living a bit longer. But more importantly, when you put this dynamic about uh, women having been disenfranchised from financial decisions, you put that into the mix, with, with women living longer than men. And you look at married couples, actually, the five-year gap looks a little different if you zoom down into, into retired couples and you only look at retired couples. And you say that in cases where the man dies, how often does it happen that the man dies first? Actually, it happens in like 65% of cases. It's high. That's, which is kind of high. Yes. It's not 50-50 and it's not 55-45. It's like 65% of the time. And secondly, when you look at the group of people where the husband had died before the wife, how long after the husband, the wife passes away, it's like 12 years average. That is a long time. So if you put all of these things together, so you've got a woman who's maybe not as involved with financial affairs up to that point, husband passes away and she needs to now all of a sudden look at, the, at securing her own financial future for 12 years off the money that is left all of a sudden she is thrust into having to manage this pension and annuity product that the, that the couple have bought to make sure that it gets managed properly. And she needs to kind of make sure that whatever beneficiaries they have and where money needs to go to some beneficiaries, that those investments are kept in place. So all of a sudden, if she hasn't been involved, it's a whole new world that is thrust upon her at a very advanced stage of her life after she's just lost a spouse. Not a great combination. So the challenge I think that is 
unique for, for women in today's day and age is around making sure that you understand as early as possible, as much as possible about the long-term financial plan and, and the structures that support the household so that you are able to reasonably easy slot in if something happens to your spouse, as opposed to you being left on the side and something un unexpectedly happens and now you're, you, you're kind of left with having to get to grips with all of this complexity in a very short space of time. I mean, I'd like to think I'm a far way off from that still, but realistically, if I were thrown into the deep end and I was faced with this daunting experience of being in retirement on my own, how could a financial advisor help and, and what would you say their role would be? So, so financial advisors are, are, are almost, uh, you know, they're key for different reasons at various points in one's life. But I would say that from your late kind of 20s, early 30s, starting to establish a, a relationship with a financial advisor is a great idea because they keep you on the straight and narrow. So if you are still saving for retirement, they make sure that you save enough. They stop you from cashing in your retirement fund and doing all sorts of like silly decisions which all of us are so prone to be doing when we change jobs. And so they help secure your nest egg for you over 40 years. But once you've retired, the role of the, of the uh, financial advisor becomes even more important because this uh, annuity product that you've bought, the pension income product, now needs management. And, and it needs a careful balance between the psychology of taking enough risk uh, so that you can get enough growth and taking too little risk and not being able to beat inflation. I mean, in the long term, inflation is, is a tax on money market products and cash products. It really eats into your returns and really reduces the value of your money over time. So having your entire retirement nest egg in cash and thinking you can live off that for the rest of your life generally never works. So you need someone to help you structure something appropriate and, and that's where a financial advisor is really great to help you strike that balance between taking too much risk and taking too little risk. Secondly, the advisor can add some science to the process by doing some calculations for you to say whether your current rate of income that you're drawing is sustainable. So that's really great. So you can get independent confirmation that, the, that you're not putting the life of your annuity in danger and you should have enough money for the rest of your lifetime. And then of course, when those really interesting times come in the markets, when the rand blows out against the dollar and there's a crash in the US and, and, and the SA market responds violently and the equity market drops by 15 or 20%, those crucial times when you can make some pretty serious mistakes if you go and fiddle with your investment portfolio, Financial advisors are there to kind of provide that continuity and to highlight to you what changes you can make and what changes would be irresponsible and dangerous. They're kind of that sanguine word of reason that, that's always there for you to consult and make sure that you avoid the kind of the big risks. And, and unfortunately in retirement, there are some substantial risks, um, especially if you make mistakes. I mean, when you're younger, still in your work and you make a mistake with an investment, you've got time to recover. Yeah. You know, you make a plan and you make things work. When you're retired and you've got only 20 years of, of your life left, it's much more difficult to recover from a really big mistake in your retirement plan. So a financial advisor really just provides that support um, and makes sure that the plan stays on the, st the kind of straight and narrow. And, and often the, the psychological calm that that introduces for someone to know that there's someone else in this with me. I'm not in this on my own. It just kind of brings a bit of serenity to the process and actually makes retirement what it's supposed to be, which is like an enjoyable phase of your life where you kind of get to tick a couple of bucket list items and play with your grandkids. I mean, who wants to worry about money? Totally, a well-deserved phase of your life. Exactly. Yes. So having a financial advisor worry about your money gives you the opportunity to do the stuff that you actually want to do when you're retired. Thanks, Yaku. I guess to round up, maybe just in three points, summarize, you know, just your insights for us around the experience and what we need to do in retirement. So, so I would say for women specifically, don't underestimate the psychological impact on the household when you as the household retires and your partner retires or you retire or both of you retire, whatever the case might be, don't underestimate it. It's quite a difficult uh, and can be quite an upsetting time as you readjust to that. Secondly, uh, if you haven't at the, date, at the date of retirement involved yourself in the financial affairs of your household, it's never too late to do that. I urge all women to be equally involved with the financial affairs of the household. And, and thirdly, um, I would almost say it's, it's in, 
impossible to manage a, um, a pension and retirement process responsibly without a financial advisor. And as the woman in the household or as a woman in, in, a, in, a, in a kind of a financial grouping, make sure that you, um, that you are, have a relationship with a financial advisor, that you uh, and the financial advisor understand what your priorities are and that you trust, have a financial advisor that you trust, not just someone who's thrust upon the household by someone else, but someone whom you can trust and who understands the history of the, of the household and can help with the continuity in case something happens. Those, I think, would be the three the three key takeaways for me. So be involved early, don't underestimate the impact and at least get some help. Thanks, Yaku. It's been great chatting as always and we really do appreciate all the insight. Thank you.